In this video, we're going to talk about uh, architecture and instructions in general, but specifically fo focusing on the particular processor we are interested in. Uh, as you, as you may, may recall, we had decided that uh, we're going to use PIC uh, 18F 1220 as the example processor. And really the big reason was it's relatively simple, is relatively updated in terms of architecture, and it's a good example to use, uh, and rather simple to use as well. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, computer architecture in general, a processor architecture can be best represented by these pictures. Let's take a, mo a moment and take a look at these. Uh, most of these are either flip-flop or you can be built out of flip-flops or gates at its simplest form. So if you think about it, we discussed in earlier video how a PROM is built. So you can kind of think about this program memory being something that input is the address, output is the content of that particular address. So in this case, we call the input address, the, out, <coughs> the content of the memory location instructions, a bunch of ones and zeros. Those ones and zeros go out to this combinational logic and produces some output going out here and depending on what it is it could be expecting this information to be coming in or going back out to a bunch of flip-flop flip-flops being data memory over here and but these are basic logic and then you might have some lines that have to be turned on or off depending on what how this logic works um, but if you, one of the things you notice is that even though we have memories and they're pretty much the same memories, we have program memory and data memory. A lot of the time this is kept separate because of performance, we wanna go faster. And typically these are some sort of a flash pro memory. So when you program the microprocessor, it's the microcontroller in this case, it stays, the program stays there until you come back and reprogram it. These things are typically good for programming up to a hundred thousand times or they're about. Memory on the other usually is not volatile memory that in other words after you turn your power on it's gone where the program memory is typically not. Okay so how does this work? Well this this is think about this as being just a simple register in our particular case this could be I believe is 23 bits for the for the particular processor. By the way uh, this is the actual part number during, the, during this presentations and the documentation, we're gonna refer to it as PIC Micro as just a name for it, but that's for pretty much the PIC 18 F20, 1220 from Microchip. All right, um, so getting back to here, this PC is 23 bits long for this particular process we are talking, processor we are talking about, and it PC stands for program counter. So let's see, let's see how that works. So you start, let's say program counter has a certain value. Program counter always, always points, it's the address, point means it's an address of the next instruction to be executed, okay? That's his definition, that's his job, is to point to the next instruction that needs to be executed. We call it program counter, not to be completed with personal computer, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, when we are looking at what happens when an instruction goes through and executed, typically a clock later or thereabout, uh, when this, this, this is executed, the next clock that comes along, this adder just does its job. So if it was looking at location zero, the next time is gonna be location at two plus zero, which is two, next time is location of four. Uh, the why by two, why not by three? Well, this particular processor we have is a 16-bit processor, uh, which basically means that um, the war, every word or every block of a program is um, uh, two bytes or 16 bits. So words are two bytes and, and that's called a 16-bit. All right, now, um, uh, which means that each instruction, uh, the smallest size of an instruction is two byte, which basically says, if I'm in memory and these are oriented in terms of uh, bytes, byte zero, byte one, byte two, byte 
I'm uh, three, four, and on and on. That means that the, the, this is the smallest instruction is going to require at least two byte, byte and we are assuming we have a small instruction. If you have a larger instruction, we got to maybe take two cycles to complete it uh, potentially and that would be one cycle, it adds two, gets the instruction, the next cycle adds another two, you get a four. So, so basically what we're saying is that if first instruction PC is looking at here, once this is executed, the next PC now is not going to be pointing there, it's going to be pointing there, but that gets executed, then the PC is going to be pointing here. So every time PC gets two added to it, and that's pretty much how that works. And this is a simplified one. Granted, we really didn't cover what happens during a loop or calls or other things. That basically would be a separate <clears throat> set of uh, uh, circuitry, which forces the PC to change to a different location instead of PC uh, plus two that we have here. Okay. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at what kind of instructions available to us. The PIC micro, PIC 18F1220, is a, indeed a reduced instruction set computer. So it is a RISC computer. And if you recall what RISC is, RISC provide, um, um, provide a um, um, minimum number of instructions that are executed and designed optimally, but they don't have lots of functionality. They have the core functionality you need to execute to build anything else you want for your computer system. And you have to write an assembly or higher level language to get those things accomplished. All right, now let's go ahead and take a quick look at what are the type of instructions. This, this system has divided the instruction into five categories so it's easier for us to find it so we've got we've got a set of instruction under byte oriented instruction byte oriented instruction simply says that this instruction operates on data in byte quantities so eight every eight bits so for example let's take the first instruction here add wf takes the value that is in one register f adds it to what is in the D register and puts it in the output. Uh, and if you also, as long as we're talking about this, this table is kind of nice because it says what this, this is how you write your assembly code, add WF number, number A. And then here tells us what it does. It tells it how long, how many cycles does it take to execute this instruction. It tells us what the binary equivalent it is, and notice it's 16 bit because that's the smallest instruction set and then it tells us what kind of status flags it changes and it would uh, there are some additional notes we can read on our recovery now in this case we're just giving you an overview in the next next uh, set of videos each one of this category of instruction we're going to dive into it in much more detail but for now let's figure out what are all the categories so we got byte oriented is one category the next one is bed oriented. Once in a while, we do not want to deal with a whole byte. We just want to change one bit in an instruction. So let's say we got we got a register, and in our register we want to change bit three. We don't want to bit change the rest of it. So we, for example, we can say bit set f whatever this register is. We don't know what it is. And we say, okay, I want to mess with bet three. So all it does is make sure bet three is set to one. That's it. And then we have a new version, which is bet clear. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to that. Okay. All right. Um, so the next set of instruction we are talking about is literal operations, which is right here. So the literal operations allows us to... Um, um, put a constant into a register or add a constant to a register, sometimes we need to do that. So those group of instruction we refer to as the literal. So these are the literal operations uh, for us to deal with. And then finally, we've got the, uh, not finally, next to final, I suppose, we got the data, data memory uh, instruction. And their job is to take a block from one location in memory and copy it to another block in another location in the memory. And that's more or less what they 
do. We're not going to spend a ton of time on these when they are useful but relatively simple. All they do take a block from one location, copy it into the other location. Finally, last but definitely not least, is the control operations. The control operations are where we really don't want to go in sequence. We want to jump someplace. We want to branch, they call it branching into someplace, or we want to go to some other location other than the next instruction. Uh, we want to ex execute this under a certain condition. So if the certain condition is true, jump here. If not, don't. And then we have some other uh, functions such as calls, which is a function call and things like that. So that brings us to the end of this video. And what we've done is basically giving a little bit of an overview of how arch architecture of these chips are set up and um, then talk a little bit about the, f the various instructions uh, types. We have the byte oriented, the um, bit oriented, literal operations and control operations. And for each one of those, we're gonna have future videos which got some much more detail of those instructions. And then uh, we mentioned data memory move mem instruction set, which moves their blocks of memory around. And with that one, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on.